Hi, I'm Ashley Edwards. I'm an assistant ex extension agent and livestock coordinator um, for programs in the central, northeast, and northwest regions. Today we're going to talk a little bit about considerations for breeding your replacement beef heifers. Now, this is something that producers seem to fret over and they kind of worry about each year. We know that on average, Louisiana producers replace about 5% of their herd annually. So despite this constant turnover of females, we get calls all the time about producers wanting to know when and if they should go ahead and breed their replacement females. So today we're gonna to go over just a few of those little um, kind of rules of thumbs that are gonna talk about this. The first one and the, the main one that we get asked a lot about is what age do I breed my heifers at? And we know through decades of data from numerous institutions across the United States that if we can get these heifers to go ahead and calve um, for the first time at two years of age, we see a lifetime of increased productivity, including more pounds of calf. However, despite these numbers, our producers are still a little anxious and that's a very valid worry or concern. We are asking these heifers to not only continue to grow themselves into their mature size, but also to work on being bred, to having a calf, calving, getting back to a status that can support that calf again, and then on top of that, also uh, rebreeding for that second time. So it is a lot to ask of these females. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about age, and we're gonna back it up and we're gonna talk about age at puberty. So if we're aiming for 24 months at calving, we need to start breeding them about 15 months of age. They should have already hit puberty by this point and you're hoping that they have gone through a couple of cycles. Now I do want to point out that I realize your purebred Brahmins are probably not going to hit that 24 month calving goal um, and maybe even some of your Brahmin influence that might be tough for them. But what I'm talking about are our um, even our eared cattle that have a little bit less Brahmin in them, but our commercial operations here, um, and then your boss Taurus breeds that you also have here in Louisiana. So behind me, we have a, a commercial herd that is a Brangus based herd. You can see there's probably some Charlet in there as well. Um, but these ladies are ready to go. Um, they're at breed them in the upcoming weeks. So how do you know if they have hit puberty or not? There's a couple of things that you can do. The first and probably the simplest is just to start monitoring estrus behavior. So are they riding each other? Are they standing still while a heifer is riding them? You can even place estrotech patches or some other estrus detection aid, aid on them um, to watch and, and to help you monitor that. The other thing that you can do and we recommend is to have a veterinarian come out and palpate and assess reproductive tract scores. So your reproductive tract scores, they are going to be palpating the uterus to feel the tone of it. They're gonna palpate the ovaries and they're gonna assess what's going on in the ovaries in terms of follicle development and maybe even corpus luteum development. They'll assign a score of one to five. Um, your fours and fives are ready to go. They're ready to be bred um, and data has shown that if you breed them once they've had a reproductive tract score of four and five, they are more likely to get bred compared to scores of one, twos and threes. So you wanna go ahead and have your vet come out, um, do that a month or two, 30 to 60 days prior to when you plan on breeding these heifers, have them do um, the reproductive tract scores, monitor for estrus, and you'll know if they're ready to be bred in terms of puberty. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is probably what you've heard is the most common rule of thumb for breeding replacement heifers. And that is going to be their overall size or weight. So the golden rule that we'll say is that they need to be at 65% of their mature body weight um, at the time of breeding. And then you want them to continue to gain and hit 80 to 85% by the time that they calve. Now, I love this rule of thumb, it is great, but I also wanna caution producers that they don't need to just look at the number on the scale. If you think about it, a small framed, overly conditioned heifer can weigh as much as a larger framed, maybe um, a little less conditioned heifer. So you have to take into account weight, condition, and body size. So you're, it's easy for you to go and look on the scale and to look um, at their frame size and everything else. But another tool that you can use is gonna be pelvic area measurements. So you use a rice pelvimeter, um, you palpate rectally, and then you go in and you place this in and you use it. Um, you can see it'll spread here, but you will measure pelvic height and pelvic width. 
you'll take those and you'll use those to calculate the overall area of the pelvic cavity. This is then used, um, there's many charts out there, but you can go in and you can look at it, look at the chart and you can say, okay, this heifer can handle having a calf at 55 pounds birth weight or 60 or whatever it may be. You might have a heifer that you think looks great and she looks wonderful and you go in and measure her pelvic area and it's small for whatever reason that may be and you get a little bit worried or a little bit more nervous about some kind of dystocia issues happening later. So we recommend um, having a veterinarian, having someone that's trained show you how to do this um, instead of just doing it yourself for the first time because it does take a little bit to actually go in figure out exactly where to place this inside the heifer that it locks into um, the pelvic bone and that you're getting accurate measurements. You would wanna do this around six to eight months of age or around weaning. Um, when you're going out and you're first actually looking at selecting which heifers to keep to potentially breed, then you'd want to go back and do this again at 15 to 18 months of age or again that 30 to 60 days prior to breeding those heifers. So if you think about having the vet out there for the reproductive tract scores a month or two before you're ready to breed, you can go ahead and do the pelvic area measurements as well um, and then take that into account again like I said their weight, their overall frame size and their condition and how they are looking. Okay, a few final things to keep in mind when you get ready for the breeding season on these heifers. So one of the first ones is it is great to keep more heifers and to actually breed more heifers than what you would want to keep um, when they come to calf. Because you have to realize even if all the things are perfect, um, everything that we've talked about looks great, they look great, chances are you're not gonna have 100% pregnancy or 100% calving rates. So we like to err on the side of caution and go ahead and keep a few extra females if you're able to do so and breed those um, and then hold on to them and when you detect pregnancy later on, um, you have a vet come out and palpate for you, then you can cull those open heifers later and you still have the number that you need. The other thing is that it is great to breed these heifers before you breed your regular cow herd. So you're gonna to wanna to keep them managed separately, um, if at all possible, their nutritional requirements are different. Remember that they are still growing, um, as well as being bred and um, trying to produce that calf for you. So manage them separately. If you can breed them 30 days before you breed um, your mature cows, or I guess you know start that breeding season 30 days before you start it for your mature cows, you give them more time to get bred and you also hopefully give them more time to recover after they've calved. Um, it's actually, I worry more probably about that second breeding than I do that first breeding because that heifer is calved for the first time. She's gonna lose some condition. She needs to gain that weight back and then be able to breed that second time. Um, so you're giving more, more chance um, for them to recover, for them to put condition on if you breed them earlier than you do your mature cow herd. We've talked a lot today about um, actual development and assessing them when you are ready to breed them or a couple months prior to breeding. If you have questions on um, how to select the best females, so we went through um, at weaning back in October and we selected which females we wanted to keep. We did keep a few extras um, in case something happened and we decided to cull some at breeding later. So we buffered some there, but we've actually gone through and we, we selected these heifers back in October. It's now April and we're getting ready to breed them. So if you want to know how do I, how do I go through my heifers and how do I pick and what priorities do I need to lay out for that, we have several videos on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you go to LSU Ag Center dash livestock, um, you can scroll down and there's a playlist. You'll see um, selection methods or selection principles for uh, replacement heifers or something along those lines. And there's four or five videos there that will actually go over some of the principles that we utilize when we were actually picking these heifers out right here. If you have any other questions on breeding your, your heifers, um, selecting them, anything like that, please feel free to reach out to me. You can also reach out to your local extension agent and they will help you out with that. Thank you and have a great day.